Using these old markings, human beings revolutionized the world. We use these symbols to count, which forever changed the face of commerce, the face of business. Using these early shapes, we changed the world again. By studying and understanding the properties of shapes, we developed geometry. Geometry has given us a way to accurately measure and divide the earth. This was essential for the creation of farming and for the agricultural revolution. Using this equation, we transformed our world in an incredible way. This time, we used mathematics to capture motion and movement. The mathematics of calculus helped us create the machines of the industrial age. Today we're using mathematics once again to change our world. And some say it's happening so fast that you might not realize it. So let's slow down to reveal some of the mathematics that is driving the new age of information. trying to do at the MIT Media Lab is invent the future and find out how people are going to work and play and learn in the future. I think that science is really fun. It's like playing in a in a sandbox, basically. That's what we're doing here at the Media Lab. It's one big sandbox with lots of toys and we can do anything with it. At MIT's Media Lab, Patty Maas and her colleagues are on the cutting edge of the computer industry. An industry that is the third largest in the United States, generating billions of dollars every year. The emphasis at the lab is to invent the future, to change computers so that they're friendly and easy for all of us to use. Computers aren't uh, very friendly yet, they're not very personal. My computer, even though I'm using it for so many years, it still doesn't get to know me and doesn't sort of react to me in a different way. So one of the things we're trying to do is make the computer into something more personal, a system that also takes a more active role in trying to help you do whatever it is you want to do. Patty Moss is creating a new kind of computer software that may someday act as your personal servant. She calls this servant a software agent. Basically, software agents are like butlers. Welcome to the home. Yes, miss. He's in the library. At the moment, of course, not everybody can afford to have a butler or a personal assistant helping you sort of with your everyday tasks and, and so on. But in the digital world, it will be easy to give everybody their digital butler, which helps them find the information that they may be looking for. Barkins, could you get me some glasses? Tumblers? Goblets? Very good, sir. How many, is sir? Oh, about three dozen. Patty Maz's digital butler can help you make sense of information overload. Anybody that's ever surfed the internet has been stricken by the affliction. There are millions upon millions of sites and so much to see. It can be overwhelming and confusing. Patty Maz's servant 
which she named Firefly, can help. It can be your personal entertainment emissary, cruising the web, looking for products and places that it thinks you'll like. So basically the way Firefly works is that you tell it a little bit about your taste in music and your taste in movies, etc., or your taste in web pages, uh, um, books, whatever. And then the system can help you find more music, more books, more movies, more web pages that you may be likely to like. Maz believes that in the future we won't be tied to desktop or laptop computers. She believes we may actually wear computers as part of our clothing. Maz and her colleagues also believe computers may someday become more like pets. Like the animated robot named Silas. Okay, Silas, let's see. Up, up. Good boy. All of the diverse technology that's being developed by researchers at the Media Lab has one thing in common. It's driven by imagination and mathematics. One of the things that really makes all of this stuff possible is that um, pretty much everybody here has some uh, background in math. It doesn't necessarily even need to be complicated math, and what makes it, I think, really fun is that it's math that is grounded in reality. We're using mathematics to, to do something real, to really sort of do something fun. When people write computer software, they're relying on the power of mathematics. When you type on a keyboard to run a program, you're activating software and sending commands to your computer. Inside the computer, the commands are in the form of electrical signals. The signals enter circuits, and they either turn the circuit on or off. As millions of circuits process commands, a computer seemingly comes to life. For example, as pixels on your computer screen are turned on or off and assigned a color, a flat screen can produce stunning graphics and animation. Ironically, this high-tech micro-production relies on a branch of mathematics that's more than a century old. England, 1854. In a small study, George Boole is trying to develop a new kind of mathematics. He has no idea that this will later lead to the modern computer. <laughs> 